In this unit, we'll be focusing on the chemistry of the alcohols, thiols, ethers, and amines. And these are four functional groups that are very important in a biochemical context. They all consist of heteroatoms, that is, not carbon or hydrogen, bearing one or more lone pairs, as well as single bonds to carbon groups. And because of their structural similarities, we can draw a number of analogies between them. So in this unit, we'll be focusing mainly on the fundamental reactivity of these functional groups and laboratory reactions in which they're involved. However, as we move forward, we'll see that these functional groups are all very important for biochemistry and biochemical reactions. For example, alcohols show up in carbohydrates and the amines show up in the amino acids. So the fundamental reactivity that we see here in the form of elementary steps is going to come back again when we look at enzyme-catalyzed reactions and other biochemical topics later in the course. Let's get right into it with the chemistry of the alcohols. Alcohols contain a carbon group, and this may be saturated or not, connected to what's called a hydroxyl group. And the hydroxyl group is the OH group with the oxygen bearing two lone pairs. And what you see on this slide is just the general polarization of atoms within alcohols. The carbon and hydrogen that are connected to that central oxygen atom are partially positive due to the electronegativity of the oxygen atom, and that leaves the central oxygen partially negative. This gives us hints to the reactivity of alcohols. So here we'll look at the structure and nomenclature first, and then the general reactivity. So as we just said, alcohols contain a carbon group. The example shown here is a saturated or sp3 hybridized carbon, and that's by far the most common example, connected to a hydroxyl group. And there are three important ideas when it comes to general reactivity that are worth keeping in mind with alcohols. The first is that the hydroxyl proton is weakly acidic. We'll look at its pKa in a future video, but it's a strong enough acid that we need to consider it, especially when strongly basic reagents are around. The oxygen atom, because it bears lone pairs, is weakly basic. It's not the world's best nucleophile or base because oxygen is relatively electronegative, but it is definitely worth considering, especially in strongly acidic environments. And the last thing worth noting is that the carbon connected to oxygen is a potential electrophile. And this is because although the OH group is not a good leaving group or nucleophuge on its own, if we were to connect a proton or a positively charged carbon to this oxygen, all of a sudden we're in a situation where this carbon has the potential to act as an electrophile and accept electrons as the CO bond breaks towards oxygen. The blue arrows here show you the general dipole moment of the hydroxyl group and of an alcohol. In general, it points toward the electronegative oxygen atom. Alcohols are often named based on the number of R groups connected to the carbon bearing the hydroxyl group. And the reason we use this nomenclature system is because alcohols with different substitution patterns at the carbon link to the hydroxyl group have different steric environments around the hydroxyl group. So for example, an alcohol with three carbon groups linked to that hydroxyl bearing carbon has a much more sterically crowded environment around the alcohol hydroxyl group than, for example, methyl alcohol with three hydrogens in those positions. So the nomenclature here, which we'll see again used for amines and, and other contexts, is that when there are three hydrogens linked to the carbon bearing the hydroxyl group, well this is simply methyl alcohol, and we see the three hydrogens here, here, and here. This is methyl alcohol or methanol. When one carbon group, which I've denoted R here, is connected to that hydroxyl bearing carbon, we call that primary, and we use the one degree symbol to represent a primary alcohol or primary functional group in general. Two R groups connected to the hydroxyl bearing carbon corresponds to a secondary alcohol with a two degree symbol used there. And three R groups connected to that hydroxyl bearing carbon, a very sterically crowded environment is referred to as a tertiary alcohol, and there we use the three degree symbol. We're not going to look at alcohol nomenclature in detail, but it is worth pointing out a few alcohols that have common names that are in very common use. Allylic alcohol, for example, contains an allyl group, a carbon-carbon double bond linked to a saturated carbon linked to the hydroxyl group. Phenol or phenol contains a benzene ring bearing a hydroxyl group and an enol contains a carbon-carbon double bond linked directly to the oxygen. In these latter two cases, the thing to note is that rather than having an sp3 hybridized carbon linked to the hydroxyl group, these carbons that are directly linked to the hydroxyl group in phenol and in enols are sp2 hybridized.